Hello everyone, Andrew, welcome back. Let's go ahead and continue working on our solar system like that. So we're creating a star and what I like to do is to set my size instead of 1.72. I'll just set my value here to 4.72 to kind of make it kind of like thinner for my Y. And so that's just what I'm going to add right there. And this is just adding the scale. I just want this to be slightly thin. And right now, let me just quickly go and jump in and go to my intensity and drag that a bit down so we don't have that uh, excessive uh, glow like that we're seeing which is kind of like uh, painful and burning so right so you can play around with the threshold and intensity it depends on what you want to uh, kind of like achieve that's super fine so uh, let's jump in and continue working So what I'll do is actually add a tint. We can even add a tint and kind of like drop this, but this will change our particle so much. So let's just go ahead and get rid of that and keep kind of working with our particle like so. You can always change these later on and tweak it till we get something we're satisfied with. All right, so let's jump over and keep on working. So right now what I want to do is to jump over to our uh, update node because we can see we haven't added any kind of like physical uh, physics effect right here. So right now in our update, let's just uh, open this up. Let's click on update and let's add a conform to spare. So I'll just do conform and we actually have this conform to spare force. So uh, this is uh, going to be like super way jumpy. So let's go ahead and add a few uh, attributes so we can actually uh, reduce this effect we're having on our spare right now because this is super kind of weird our forces are all around the place so what we can do is just drop these down so i'll set my uh, attraction speed to one like so and what i'm going to do with our attraction force i'll set it to a negative 0.05 just to reduce that strength drastically I'll leave the uh, stick distance and also the stick force. I'll set it to one, just like so. And next, what we're going to do is to add a turbulence node. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll just click this and let's just search for tur turbulence like so. And I'll just put my confirmed pair on the top. And you can actually see our turbulence is way jumpy. So let's go ahead and drag this a particle below and then work with our turbulence. So here I'll, uh, I'll leave these two values the same way they are, our relative and our value. And what we're going to work with our frequency and our octaves. So basically what I want to do, let's just go ahead and look at this. Now what will really uh, make or break this is our intensity and our drag. If we actually check these out, these are what are going to, you know, kind of like walk around and give us the effect we want. So I'll set these back to one and also set this back to one by default. And let's go ahead and create a few uh, extra nodes that will kind of like, you know, change the way our particle is being rendered with its period. So uh, right here on our global volume, what we can do is just set down our intensity a bit so we can uh, actually see what we're working with and I'll just drag this down a bit so let's go ahead and create some uh, time nodes and connect them with some values so we can actually have constants we can plug into our intensity and drag so the first one I'll create I'll just right click create node and I'll do a periodic total time so I'll do a periodic total time and just drop that in there I'll set our uh, initial value, let's do 10, just to keep that a bit meaningful. So for our range, I'll just set the uh, Y value to 2. And what I'm going to do next is to drag the output, and I'll set it to a random number. So let's do a random, random number like so. And here I'll just leave it as, uh, as the default with per particle. And I'll take our output and just place that. It's going to be in our min for our maximum value. Let's use a value of 0.5, like so. And then let's pass that into our intensity field, like that. 
Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and work with our drag. So for our drag, again, I'll use our periodic total time. So I have this already. I'll just copy this and paste it. So we have another uh, periodic total time. I'll use the same default values. And also, let's take our random number. So let's also copy that and paste it. And I'm not going to use constant this time around. So and I'm going to just take our output and pass this into the minimum. And then another node I'm going to use is the remap node. And basically this will allow us to clamp a value and to return a value between two values with an input and maximum value. So let's go ahead and see uh, this in action. So I'll just right click and create a node and I'll call that the remap like so. So now that I have that remap node, I'll go ahead and turn down these values. So for my old range uh, min, I'll just leave that at zero. I'll leave this at one. But for my new range, I'm just going to set this to 1.2. And I'll just send my maximum range to say 1.3, just using slight values. And I'll take the output of our random number into the input of our remap node. And I'll now take the in output of our remap into the input of our drag like so. All right. So what we're getting at here is that we're having this uh, particles kind of like move in this direction. So let's go ahead and see how we can fix that real quick. So right now we're having this kind of like diffraction over here is because we haven't set our radius. So let's open our blackboard. And just we have our radius right here. Let's set our value of our radius to one so we can actually confine this in our scene like so. So let's go ahead and click on our main camera and go to game object and go to align with view. So we can actually align this object with our view. So we can actually see it kind of like pulsing and we're actually having a gradual movement just like we have in a like star like so. So what I'll do next is to jump into our global volume and just play around with our uh, intensity and our threshold. Uh, there you go. So I'll set this to three and I'll just drag my intensity kind of like down just so I can have that kind of like solar uh, effect. And what we can do is kind of like bring around our tint and set this to a kind of like uh, yellowish color. And you can actually uh, just play around with this from there and see what you can actually uh, work with. So let's just drag this a bit and just dial it down. We can even make it as intense as we want just to give it that value. And we'll just drag our threshold up a bit so we can reduce that light effect. So basically that's how you can create this uh, effect. Just play around with it, add some scatter, add some HQ filtering, and you can even add other uh, effects on it. So uh, thank you very much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Now there's a lot more we can um, learn with Unity's uh, visual effects graph. And each time you actually need help, especially when it comes to these nodes, we can always check out the help from Unity. And we can just quickly open our web browser and search on the Unity's help and click on the manual. And right now I'm on the uh, visual effects section. If you click on the standard attributes, you can actually see a lot, especially about the nodes. So uh, once again, thank you very much for watching guys. Until we meet again.